Hello and welcome to Midlander Gaming. Slightly different video this time in the fact that it's a PowerPoint I'm afraid and not an actual video. Mostly because or purely because I've done a bit of hobbying and I don't have a setup to record painting and modelling live. So I'm afraid I've had to take some images and we'll take you through those images as we go. Now well, my intention was to paint up my army list that I'd chosen. Uh, unfortunately, I got sidetracked by terrain. Reason being is that I'm a bit unsure of the, the paint scheme and the, the method I'm going to use to, to paint my army at the moment. And also, at the end of the video, I'll give you another reason why I decided not to paint the army. So instead, I decided to paint some terrain. Now this is terrain I've had for a little while and if I flick to the next page you can see it here. This is TT Combat Houses, um, MDF Houses. I've got about three sets I believe here, some houses fully built, some houses, the same houses but in a ruined state and then a shop set that was also in the ruined set. Now these houses are pretty good value, they're around, somewhere around about Ten pound for for this each set, uh, ten twelve pound set, and uh, yeah, I've had them for a little while, but I've never got past just building them up as is in the photo there, uh, taken from one of the previous videos. They weren't even glued at this stage; they're just loose and, and slotted in, uh, which is a good thing about the, the set. The, you know, you can build them up and don't actually really need glue. Once you've popped them out, they all fit together quite nicely. Uh, but glue is definitely better. Some PVA glue just to hold them tighter. You can see up here, for example, that the walls fall apart without the adhesive holding them together. So I would recommend using the glues, but at a push you don't have to. So anyway, that's some ideas of how I wanted to, to paint these parts up. Um, I didn't want to spend too much time on terrain. I wanted to get to a decent standard, but quickly. Uh, I've got too much too much to paint, so I don't like spending too much time to achieve a really high-end finish. It just needs to look good on the tabletop. So with that in mind, I decided to get all this MDF terrain and yeah, just put the uh, ideas that I've had in, in action and to be fair my ideas were quite limited and a lot of it was also made up as I went along so we'll have a look at the next slide. So the first thing I decided was that the while the, uh, there's a lot of detail on the walls and etc the, um, the actual bases of the, the buildings look a bit plain and I thought I was worried about once painted up that it might look a bit um, a bit dull should we say. Now originally my thoughts prior to, to doing these uh, these buildings I was going to put some flooring some you know chop up bits of balsa wood to make it look like lots of little wooden planks and flooring in the floor and, but to be honest again going back to my principle from earlier I decided I was going to take far too long so I kept it nice and simple and I went for two different types of gravel or, or ballast and the first thing I did was complete the lines of, of the walls with PVA glue and put the larger of the ballast in to, sig to try and simulate where the wall used to be and, and, and it's crumbled or been destroyed and that will be the, the remains of, of the house bricks. So once I've dipped that in I then added some extra spots here and there around and dipped it into the smaller ballast to create some finer debris and, and general uh, general bricks and, and whatever else might be from a damaged building alongside. So you can see in that image. And I did this across all the ruined parts uh, in slightly different shapes to them. So on this one where it's just bombed out, I tried to shove in just mostly around where you can see and what's visible through the hole because you know I don't think you're going to see a lot of it afterwards anyway. And this is kind of the effect that was left after adding some PVA glue down in the ballast. Now I wanted to do it before painting just so that the paint applies a little extra fixing ability to it 
And also what you can see is I also just glued in the uh, walls just to add some extra strength and keep them held together. So yeah, so that was the, I went through all my, my ruined houses. I didn't do it so much on the, on the complete houses because I, I felt that they didn't need uh, rubble and, to wrap, uh, and, and debris on the bases. Uh, so I did that to all the ruins and then undercoated them in either black for the ruined houses or white for the complete houses. So firstly, I had a bit of an experiment with one of the ruined houses. So this is kind of how it looked after being sprayed. I didn't actually capture just a spray effect. I guess this image here is probably the closest one. So I sprayed it up. Uh, first thing I did was probably the wrong way around. I, I, did, but I was keen to just have a go at painting the bricks and see how they would come out. So I used like a ready brown color from Vallejo slapped it on didn't really worry too much because at the end of the day it's a ruined house anyway so it doesn't need to look fucking neat um, but if you notice I usually use that same red to pick out the line of thicker rubble and then just did some odd splots here and there on the uh, thinner bits as well um, now after I did all that I realized that really I should have probably dry brushed and did the walk done the walls first before doing the detail parts so I then dry brushed it um, and it went over a bit on the bricks but to be honest it wasn't as bad as I was expecting after dry brushing and the dry brushing was just to, to add a little bit of texture um, and colour to, to the, the black primer so I just made the various bits stand out a little bit more uh, you can see on the side here that it picked a bit of the MDF graining but to be honest it, even though it's MDF graining it seemed to suit the house and, and the run down nature of it so I left it um, and that was my first attempt that was my first building I did and it's uh, it, it was, I was reasonably happy with it but you know I was, I was like right well, okay we'll leave it at that stage and I'll try some of the other houses so I then tried the, the white or the, the complete houses now this one again I've not really got the steps in place but here you can kind of see where I started and I sprayed the roof prime the roof with a uh, space wolf gray and prime the house with a white just a car spray primer white um, and then again like i said i didn't want to spend too long so i used some contrast paints i think it was wild wood fur or something to pick out all the wood features the doors the window frames um, and at that stage you know it was okay playable but I just wanted to go a little bit further so what I did which is a bit more visible in this image here is I added some Norn oil um, along the bottom just to give it kind of like a like a rising damp sort of feel um, did some dribbles down from the roof windows and then that's, that's all in in fact I think that's actually in Ag Agrax Earth sorry not not Norn oil so just to give it some kind of a weathered appearance and then I decided to get some Militar and green contrast paint and thin that down a little bit and just add some kind of mossy effect so whereas this with the Agrax Earth uh, I kind of went down with, with streaks the moss I actually decided to go more up with it I don't know if you can see um, to kind of signify that algae and moss might grow up towards the light I have no idea nothing to base it on I just 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 had a go and i just put some odd spot of color here and there just to just just to break it up and as you can see on the side a little bit as well on this one i did put some streaking in the on the roof tiles you can just about make it out here but to be honest it was so faint that i didn't bother with the rest so yes yeah, so that's what i did on this this house here um although it's a ruined i did apply the same uh, style as this but i did the house actually in a desert sand color um, but in the end I didn't really like how it came out it looked to be honest it looked like it was still just MDF um, it didn't really stand out so much but again I don't like spending too much time so even though I'm not happy with it I decided just to carry on and just have it done and it's uh, it's you know it gives a bit of variation so it's not my favorite house but you know I still got a, a finished part out of it uh, and that's the prior one where I hadn't quite finished at this stage but I just put it towards next to these and uh, as you can see I thought 
the houses came out pretty good but and now after that i was less happy with this ruin so i decided to have another go at the ruins and see if i could improve what i'd done first time round and this is what i came up with so that's the current one and this is my uh, new and improved version of a ruin now how i achieved this was i got to this stage with dry brushing as before then what i did and i think that as a, as a note the dry brush if i remember it was a, like an ivory sand color on top straight on top, top of black primer but what i did after dry brushing was i sp splatted on literally quite heavily um, you can just about kind of see it as brush marks i just splatted on big dollops of brush marks and once it stopped splatting on so much i then dry brushed over again just to smooth it all out and mix it all up and rotary sort of movements with a brush and up and down and all sorts just to, to blend it in a bit more just to make it look a bit like natural rendering that's been burnt away and worn away over time or damage over the, from whatever has, has happened here and i just thought it just gave uh, the lighting's not great so this is just basic kitchen light which is very yellow and very dull you can see it's dark outside so it's not really picking it up this probably picks up a truer picture of how it looks um but yeah it's uh, as you can see it just kind of gave it a look like it used to have rendering it's slowly falling away you can see some cracks there in the render that's actually from the mdf model but it worked quite nicely and then i just applied the same logic as i did with the house uh, the full complete houses so painted in the frames and doors with uh, a brown contrast paint uh, painted in the bricks with a ready brown color from Vallejo and um, added it onto the rubble that's in between the the, the, the walls to sh make it look like it's all the bricks that have been destroyed and fall fell down and then the smaller debris inside I picked out with a different color like a tan earth or something along those lines and then picked out these wooden beams in just obviously a wood color and yeah I was, I was kind of much happier with how this had came out to the, the first attempt um, I thought felt and I thought I kind of still don't think the picture still does it quite as much justice but at the same time it's uh it looks, even in the picture it looks, i think it looks okay it's certainly good enough for a tabletop so so i then decided to apply this to all the ruins and here we can see uh, a collection now of the, of the houses as i went on so um just what i'll just point out on here's up looking down as well i did dry brush inside and just kind of went over and over doing a dry brush to give it a kind of a faded and blended in sort of appearance you can see i've picked out the wooden beams there the red brick red brick and different color for the smaller debris um here's there where you can see the kind of yellow primed house against the white primed house but it looks okay but it kind of gives it a bit it looks a bit too close to the mdf original color so the, I can't stop seeing MDF unfortunately um, but there you can see uh, various different effects so the two white houses that I've painted at this stage um, and the new style of ruined house here and here and then the yellow one so I was, I was getting quite happy with, with what I've done what I've achieved and then I started doing some more ruined houses so I started using that same technique applying some more um, and then I did actually do another one of these houses but had it a bit more cleaner a bit more like the original so it's like it's only just been damaged maybe not as much fire damage and talking about fire damage you can also see like a smoke around the um, hole of the roof I tried to put like just a bit, bit of Norn oil and, and I think of Adam Black just dry brushed on building up slowly and speckling it on just to make it look a bit like uh, it's all smoke damaged so yeah um, next page here you can just see a bit closer in on the smoke damage um, the beams I had actually painted them brown but after doing the smoke damage they went darker and darker and darker but to be honest I kind of thought it looked likely what might have happened where the smoke stained the wood um, and on this one because it was so white inside I actually put null oil all on the inside to darken it down because it was just too stark and too bright inside um, so yeah there's a bit of a closer up image of the how it looks from looking down on, above onto the, uh, the, the the ruined parts you can see kind of 
where I've dry brushed and blended in the, the floors. And again on this one, just uh, the smoke damage doesn't seem to be standing out on this a little bit, but what it does show is that I also, as well as kind of dry brushing smoke damage on, um, I did put a speckle of like kind of stipple black to put like darker spots of of uh, smoke damage in. It didn't seem to stand out on this picture very well. That's more what it looks like there. Um, but yeah, again, um, this was because this is on a black primer, you can see the inside was nice and dark naturally. So didn't need to do too much in there, just dry brushing. Whereas, like I say, this one needed to be washed and, and darkened down. And there's a picture of all the houses together. Uh, and this one here is a uh, one not seen. I didn't really take any images of this one, but it's basically the same as, as the complete houses where it was primed white. Had to do a wash inside because it was too visible. Um, and, but yeah, I had the streaking effects on there. Um, bricks and, and dry brushed all the uh, debris and then picked out all the wood as before and just picked out this one actually has uh, some chimney breasts so I picked out the bricks and, and chimney tops just the same as I did with the houses. Um, but again, lighting wasn't that great so just a moment, a few moments ago I thought I'd take it to the gaming table and take some pictures under some uh, strip lights and floodlights just to see if we can get some better images. So there we have it, um, with some tanks and, and troops and infantry bases for scales just so you can see how it all looks. Um, and yeah, I think it kind of came out all right. So at the moment, I don't like how it looks just plop, plopping on the table. So my, my next step is to improve the terrain further, um, complete, carry on doing terrain. Because I think I'm concerned that no matter how good the, the I can make the video of, of a game, and I'm not sure how good I can do because I've never videoed gaming really, that if the board doesn't match the quality of the game, the footage and the actual fun, hopefully the fun nature of the game itself, if the terrain and the, the board doesn't look good enough, then you know it's uh, it's going to let the whole side down. So now I've done these buildings, I'm still not happy that that is enough. So I'm going to go off and do a lot more terrain, and I'll I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, yeah, and there we go. Just a, another picture. Just highlight. There's plenty of room for the troops to get inside, tanks to get inside, and then fireflies. And then uh, I think what I did then is just try, try and make it a bit more fitting in with the era and um, I quite like that image, seeing the men on top of the top floor with the firefly in between two buildings. And there we have all the terrain together. So I think there's 13 houses all together. Um, four undamaged houses, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, f three partially damaged ones, and and kind of a fourth in between partial damage and full full damage. And then there's four full damage ones, and then there's one shot one. Uh, but I think on the board with a few roads and walls and gardens and things, I can create a nice little village or hamlet for a, for a, 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 some terrain. Hopefully, that's the plan. Um, so I just need to make the rest of the terrain to make that happen. And there we are, just a little bit of a, more of a uh, setting the scene or, or making it a little bit more, <laughs> I guess, historically, I wouldn't say accurate because I'm never going to be historically accurate, but it looks more like a his video reel, I guess, or something like that. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, now I did say at the end of the video I'd, I'd give you a bit of an update on how I was getting on with my Omnist. I think I'm actually going to do this on an, on another video so I'm going to have to leave you on a bit of a, a cliffhanger as if, if it even is a cliffhanger if you're that excited but yeah I'm going to tell you what give you an update on what I'm going to do for an army list of Germans as you can see I've got Brits and they're, they're painted up and ready but Rob's going to do Brits um, so this is giving me a perfect excuse to to finally paint up Germans and the next video will be an update of what I've done for my Germans so um, hope you enjoyed this uh, hopefully it's 
if you've got the TT combat terrain, uh, the MDF terrain, you know you know it's pretty good. But hopefully this gives you maybe some inspiration to what to do to your own if you haven't painted it already. Um, I'm not great at you know painting terrain and making terrain, so I keep it nice and basic. But I think even with a, a nice, fast and easy approach, it's come out pretty good. So if I can do it, definitely anyone can do it. Uh, and I'd recommend just giving it a go. It really it isn't that hard and doesn't take too long. Like I say, I did all of those 13 or 14 houses in a week and that was just spent in a few hours each evening after work just having a go. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next video.